All right, folks, so the new expansion has been announced. It's Forged in the Barrens, which means, of course, it's time for some card reviews. We've also got core set card reviews already out, and I think more on the way. So just stay tuned. Lots and lots of cards to discuss, including a ton of cards uh, in this video. So we're going to kick things off pretty quickly here with the new legendary Shadow Hunter Vol'jin. This is already in the game, I guess. I'm still doing card reviews. Uh, but I think it's out now. Everybody's going to get it for free, kind of like we saw with stuff like Silas in the past. It's a five mana three six with the battle cry. Choose a minion and then swap that minion with a random one in its owner's hand. So a pretty nifty effect here. This can be a bounce back style effect if you want uh, on your own. You could use it to bounce stuff back into your opponent's hand as well as a sort of risky sap of sorts. You could also use this to cheat something out into play much cheaper than normal with Shadow Hunter Vol'jin. For instance, if you have, say, like a Malagos in hand, uh, well, Malagos is no longer going to be a corset, so forgive me with some of these examples, but, uh, you know, some crazy threat like an old school Malagos, uh, you could take, you know, like a Silver Hand Recruit or a Totem from your board and guarantee you're going to pop your Malagos out for five mana, leaving you a lot of mana to do some crazy stuff. So some absolute combo potential there. Also, of course, just pulling back like big battle cry effects into hand without necessarily sacrificing onboard tempo. That can be a big deal, particularly if they're five mana or less and you can combo them out. So play some small battle cry, keep a decent sized set of minions in hand, swap them, you get um, the battle cry effect and maybe a nice uh, tempo play with this three, six and whatever else on board as well. And then of course, if you need to, you know, your opponent plays a convincing infiltrator. I know it's rotating. You're going to have to give me a while to update my examples. Uh, you just don't want to deal with it. You want to get rid of it. You want to take the risk that they uh, have some random minion off their Galakrond. Again, I know it's rotating, um, but you could bounce back the convincing infiltrator, get some other random garbage minion or one drop they've been chilling on in hand and use this as a sort of pseudo sap. So um, a handful of different uh, utility options here for the Shadow Hunter Vol'jin, which I think is cool. It seems like it's going to be a pretty fun card. The question for cards like this for me always boils down to, though, it's like, is there a deck that's going to need this specific effect enough that it's worth the opportunity cost of missing out on some other card you could run in your deck instead? Is this kind of weird conditional bounce effect or this like kind of risky sap or this combo enabler is it going to be good enough or reliable enough are there going to be enough moments that pop up in games that this is anything more than uh sort of a fun diversion or something that you know changes games when it gets randomly generated i don't know that it's good enough to make the cut in a deck list it feels like unless there's some very specific combo effect that's fueled by this its general use cases just don't seem reliable enough it's just going to be a lot of scenarios where this does nothing or fails or uh just doesn't make a lot of sense so for me, uh, I think Shadow Hunter Vol'jin has that ceiling a little bit where there's that Maligos style thing, not Maligos exactly, of course, but um, most of the time this one's going to be a pretty flat card that isn't really lining up for those perfect scenarios on board, and therefore I think it'll be merely average most of the time. So next up here is Blade Master Samuro, a character I know well from Heroes of the Storm. He's a four mana one six with Rush and a new keyword Frenzy. Uh, if you haven't seen Frenzy yet, essentially this effect will activate the first time this character takes damage. So for instance, if you have a Blade Master Samuro here, it's got Rush, you uh, put it on board and you trade it into a minion, it's going to take damage and it's going to activate its effect, thereby dealing damage equal to its attack to all enemy minions. So if this is just the base 1-6, this is basically a whirlwind on a body, which frankly I don't think is bad at all. There's a lot of health to work with here. Uh, so, you know, you could trade it into a lot of different things. Maybe pop some Divine Shields, clear some one ones lingering around. That's not a bad base effect. And then if you buff this at all, whether it be a hand buff or whatever other mechanisms, it becomes an interesting board clear, which, you know, not all classes are necessarily going to need that sort of board clear or care about this kind of body or rush minion. But you can definitely imagine some decks like things we've seen in the past within Rage Warrior where this just checks off a couple different boxes pretty nicely where it's like, okay, we got some removal, we got some rush stuff, we got a body sticking around, we can buff this pretty nicely, and suddenly that's interesting. Uh, so there are some worlds for sure where I think Blade Master Samuro uh, could make some interesting swing-style plays. And to be frank, like, 
it's not the worst card ever just at a base level, you know? Like, clear a 2-2, two -two, yeah, it's okay, it's fine. There'll be times where you play that and you're not that upset that it happened. Other times you could put it down and make it awkward for your opponent where uh, they don't necessarily want to hit it or if they wait, you might buff it and make things even worse. So I like some of the friction aspects of it there. But all in all, I think a reasonably solid card at a base level. It's got some fun upsides and some play into, uh, which would make it a really nice swing card as well. So uh, it won't fit in every deck. Not everybody's going to need this sort of thing, but I think it could pop into one or two as a, as a fairly solid option. Moving on here to Chain Lightning, a new spell for Shaman. And uh, I didn't have good options for the artwork here on the uh, follow-up versions, but we'll talk about it. This deals two damage to a minion and a random adjacent minion. So, um, you know, a couple two damage pings there. And it upgrades when you have five mana. So once you get to five mana in your tray, this is going to deal three damage to a minion and a random adjacent one. And then once you get to 10 mana, it's going to deal four four damage, uh, which, you know, um, it still stays two cost, doesn't increase in cost at all. It just gets more efficient over the course of a game. So encouraging a slower play style, slower uh, game lines, you, uh, you know, top deck this late in the game, it's going to be a pretty nice, cheap, you know, multi-shot plus sort of card uh, for only two mana. And, um, you know, it's going to be a decent uh, removal option. It's like a forked lightning, basically, to base. Uh, and actually, even cheaper in mana, really, if you count the overload for Forked Lightning, which sometimes those feel good in a pinch. And then over the course of the game, it just gets better and better and better, and you could definitely use it to clear a couple medium-sized things or more with spell damage. Also noteworthy, this is a nature spell. I guess all spells, or virtually all spells down in Hearthstone, we don't know about all of them, but a lot of them, maybe all of them, are going to have um, spell types, like minion types, and there are going to be cards that buff uh, these sorts of cards. We're going to talk about one here in a second. In fact, a new legendary that's nature spell damage specifically that's only going to affect nature spells, which is really cool because it allows them to balance and design very specifically around certain spells and effects, making like a nature shaman a real possibility. So anyway, um, I could definitely see Chain Lightning popping into a deck that just needs some cheap swingy removal uh, for medium-sized boards. I think this fills that gap really nicely, whether you play it on two for two mana, whether you swing it into a turn on five and play a three drop alongside it. I, I think it'll feel really good in a lot of different board states. Some riskiness there with that random adjacent one aspect, but uh, unless your opponent has four or five minions, I think there will still be plenty of ways to line this up pretty effectively and position it where it still feels like you got enough value out of it for only two mana. So this card looks like it has solid upside and playability to me. So here is said legendary Brucon for Shaman, a four mana, five, four with nature spell damage plus three. And um, that's a lot of spell damage for a normally statted four drop. You could see some insane potential here. Now, I want to be clear. We don't know which cards are going to be available that are nature cards. For instance, is Lightning Bolt going to be in standard format? I have no idea yet. Uh, that would make Lightning Bolt insane. One mana deal six. That might be a little bit too good. Uh, we also don't know exactly what spells are going to be nature. We can probably guess to some extent. It looks like Lightning Spells indeed will be. Uh, or things like Lava Burst. Is that going to be a nature spell or like a fire or, you know, whatever lava type spell? I don't know. Earth type or whatever. It sounds like nature. So I don't know exactly. Somebody out there who knows spell classifications from World of Warcraft might be able to tell us a little more. I don't know yet. I'm going to wait and see. All the official stuff so it's a little bit hard to assess this card uh with that regard but at the end of the day we do know that it's still just a really solid stat line at a base and ridiculous spell damage we also saw lightning storm is going to be in the course that that alone might make this worth it you're going to have a six damage guaranteed lightning storm with brucon because lightning storm is being changed to deal three damage every time there's no more two or three so uh, that's insane, like a big seven mana swing turn that leaves behind a pretty nice body and the threat of more future spell damage. And our previous card looks really good with Brucon. That suddenly clears some pretty big nasty stuff uh, in the mid game. You're going to be looking at maybe, uh, you know, a couple six damage pings again there with our last card. So uh, even if we only know a small subset of the cards, we can still look at the characteristical nature of this one and say like, look, man, this thing statted well. The spell damage is nuts. I mean, remember Malagos was only five. So although it will restrict deck building to some degree because you may not want to run 
other spell types as much. You might just want nature spells. I think there will still probably be enough options for this card to empower something uh, rather nicely with this big of a spell damage bonus on a good base stat line. Those are all the things that signal this card's probably going to make sense somewhere along the line, uh, especially as, you know, potentially we get more nature cards in future expansions as the card base grows. Cards like this that are more niche based will just get more and more options uh, to build a deck into. And you may not need that many to make this feel good. Although, of course, that's always the risk is how many spells does your deck have? Is this card any good when you don't have those spells in hand or don't have enough? And does it restrict you too much? So there's clearly some risk and downside anytime you get a card with a specific style effect. That said, still looks like the numbers make a ton of sense to me. All right, so now let's talk about good old Mancrake. Everybody knew this was coming when we heard Barrett's or thought Barrett's. Uh, the hunt for Mancrick's wife, indeed. It's a meme. I, it takes too long to explain here, but uh, basically a fond meme and memory for many uh, old school World of Warcraft players. Mancrick, a three mana, three four. With a Valakrai help, Mancrick find his wife. She was last seen somewhere in your deck. And then sadly, when you discover Mancrick's wife, things don't look too great. Uh, but it's a cast when drawn that summons a 310 Mancrick who immediately attacks the enemy hero. So um, you get a 3-4 at a base, you know, nice little stat dump. And then when you draw Mancrick's Wife, you get an instant free 310 and 3 damage also as well, hitting the enemy hero. So uh, that's a pretty big minion to get for free and some free damage to boot as well. Although, of course, it does take a little while to actually uh, find a Mancrick's Wife in some cases. There might be games where you hit it instantly and it's just an absurd tempo play. Might be games where you never hit it at all and you maybe didn't get a lot out of your three drop. So will there be decks that can walk that line where they have enough card draw that they reliably hit Mancrick's Wife and, in fact, um, that 310 matters to them? Because a control deck like might eventually get to Mancrick's Wife, but maybe they don't care that much about a 310 and they'd rather... Uh, just have some three drop that adds like more value or more resources or more removal. So it may not really be worth that opportunity cost. Whereas uh, maybe a, an aggro deck would love to play a three mana three or four that summons a three ten the next turn and creates this really nasty board state. But where's that middle ground? Like does an aggro deck draw enough? Maybe they aren't drawing any cards. They don't ever hit man cricks and it's just never connects. And it's just a three mana three, four, which of course we have a lot of those these days. It's not worth it. Control deck doesn't care enough. Maybe. So I'm worried Mancrick's going to fall in the gap. I think you have to have this perfect middle ground with a deck that has enough card draw or like a shuffle rogue style thing where you're really pulling these out of your deck and getting it reliably, or it's just not going to be worth the base level. And I know a lot of people say like, well, he's just a three mana three, four Regis. That's fine. It, it is fine. But remember, there are other three mana three fours with effects that are doing things immediately. There's rush minions, there's value generators. So it's not just like, yeah, he's okay in a vacuum. He has to beat something else to be put in your deck. And I don't know if the 310 reward here is reliable enough or big enough, um, but I wouldn't be totally shocked if there's a deck where it just kind of lines up and it makes sense, and particularly things like Highlander, perhaps in the future if we get Highlander support or if there's some uh, in Corsad or whatever, we don't know what it's going to look like, but this would be the sort of Highlander style card where you don't have a lot of options in three drops and this one just kind of makes sense. Uh, so yeah, there's potential, but I think his consistency will be his downfall and his deck fit. It's just a lot of the decks will be like, well, yeah, maybe there's just a better option where I can trust that it's going to do something really cool. That said, if the swing here where you hit that Mancrick's Wife or you can pull it out of your deck instantly, very reliably some other through some other tool would make this very, very powerful. Because imagine, you know, turn three or turn four comes down and you get a three, four and a three, 10 right off the bat. Some decks just won't be able to deal with that. And it would be too overwhelming and it would just win the early game board and it would snowball and it would be an instant win. So there's that potential. But again, I think it's very, very unreliable. Next up here is Peon, a two mana, two, three neutral with Frenzy at a random spell from your class to your hand. So uh, if this guy survives damage, he's going to be a nice uh, resource generator. You get a little spell attached to your two, three. That's cool. Spells are good. Uh, it is random spell, though, which random spells aren't always as good. They might be a little bit better on average with the core set versus like some crappy classic cards. You know, you think about Paladin, there's always those garbage secrets you don't want, random effects. So they might be a little better on average moving forward. It seems like core set is going to have mostly good cards, upgraded cards, buff cards, etc. So uh, that's a good sign for random spells in general. 
Uh, but I think the bigger problem for this card is consistency, because as we saw with our previous uh, Frenzy Minion, it's really easy to attack and survive. And I don't know if I actually emphasized the survive part on the last one very well. Um, but with Rush Minions, you kind of control that. It's easy. You're very likely with six health uh, on uh, Samuro to survive the attack and get off your Frenzy. The Peon, you're probably not going to get that as reliably, because you're going to play this. Your opponent's going to like Frostbolt it or whatever, and it's going to die. It's not going to survive, so it's not going to activate its Frenzy. And uh, that makes it way less reliable. So you're going to have to like do it yourself. That feels weird. There's like some Aug Merchant cards that do that. But is that worth it for just a random spell? I don't really think it is necessarily. It feels like there's going to be more uh, proactive and tempo-based two drops, which is what most people who are running a lot of two drops will care about because random spells aren't going to be good enough for control decks to like run this as a way to uh, get some extra resources, I don't think. So ultimately, uh, Peon just looks too uh too random and um not able to get his effect off really all that often without some uh you know extra effort on your part and extra effort's never something you really want to go into in hearthstone you want cards to just work and uh, unfortunately this one won't just work so next up here is the razor main raider a five minute five six with frenzy attack a random enemy so this is another frenzy card that doesn't benefit from rush you're just kind of plopping it down and hoping that it works and uh, it's six health it's it's more likely to work where your opponent maybe has to trade in a couple minions or use a spell that doesn't quite finish it off alongside a minion and then you might get this bonus attack uh, but there'll be other instances where it just doesn't work and you plopped it and it doesn't do much it's you know if you give like a broomstick to this card it suddenly becomes way more interesting i think because then maybe you can like clean up a board take a value trade and deal five face damage to your opponent. So that's an interesting angle for this one. But what other cards just benefit more from the same sort of broom treatment? There's going to be ha have to be some exact deck where there's a lot of broom and aggro and you care about maybe squeezing in some extra face damage. Or there could be some worlds where you're hoping this goes two for one on minion trades as well. So there's any deck or card that reliably gives things rush so this can attack uh, more regu regularly and really give you the control over the frenzy as opposed to your opponent. I think the Razor Main Raider becomes... Uh, notably stronger in that case but it has the same problems as the last one where it's just going to sit there sometimes and do nothing and you're going to have to do extra work to make it work and that's not what you want to do you want your cards to do things right away you don't want to have to have two card combos in hand all the time so i think in many cases the razor main raider will just feel uh, a little too slow and awkward without that extra push moving on to the druid of the plains and uh, we got a rush frenzy minion i think that's the sweet spot this one is for Druid, of course, seven mana, seven, six beast with Rush and Frenzy transform into a six, seven Kodo with Taunt. And this card seems really strong to me because you've got this great minion that can take trades into, you know, a five, five. Uh, it survives the trade. It's Frenzy Prox. And then you're left behind with a six, seven Taunt on board. So it's this just obscenely strong swing card take a great trade on board. And if, you know, sometimes you can just play it as a seven, six, if you have to, you know, just ogre it and you're maybe not that unhappy, but usually you're going to take a great swing on board and then have a great body behind. That's both defensive and still really well statted literally in ogre. So to me, this looks perfect. And Druid doesn't have any trouble getting to seven mana and playing cards for seven mana, of course. So I could see this in a beast deck, a ramp deck, a big deck. There's a handful of like a Nazoth deck could use this really successfully as well. Um, it just looks super good to me and exactly the sort of thing Druid needs. This card looks strong. Moving on to the Spirit Healer, a new neutral minion, four mana, three, six. After you cast a holy spell, give a random friendly minion plus two health. So this is a neutral minion, but it sure feels like a priest card. Uh, I guess you could also say paladin are probably going to have holy spells, priest, paladin, presumably. And um, it's a little, you know, board buffer, basically, where if you're chaining some cheap holy spells, maybe you get a lot of stats and health on board on this base 3-6 on top of it. And, uh, you know, we've seen a handful of like health buff stuff pop into priest already. It seems like that's the direction Blizzard wants to go with priest in particular, and it's just not working yet. Um, I, I don't really envision it working ever, to be honest. It just feels so passive and it doesn't create enough pressure. And unless there's some really dedicated cards coming in Corset or expansions to support this high health 
minion based strategy for priest and definitely some card draw also to fill in the gaps because you need to play a lot of cheap spells for these cards to work and when your deck's full of cheap spells you run out of cards super fast and priest has no card draw paladin's not that great on card draw either so spirit healer it looks like it has a lot of problems to solve before this becomes uh, a reasonable like archetype or game plan because right now it just doesn't seem to work so I have a lot of doubts about Spirit Healer. It's very specific in that it has to be holy spells. The health buff doesn't seem that substantial. The base stat line's okay, but it's nothing to write home about. So all in all, it looks like this card to me has so many challenges to overcome and nothing that really jumps out at you to say like, oh yeah, this is obviously gonna be really good. So it feels to me like unless things change drastically, Spirit Healer's just not gonna get there. So moving on to the Imp Swarm here for Warlock. Uh, this is another upgradable spell. It starts as a two mana summon a three, two imp. And then when you get to five mana, you summon two imps. And then when you get to 10 mana, you summon three imps. They're all still three twos. But at the end of the day, you get a two mana summon three, three, two imps, which is clearly a, a pretty nice, efficient board reload. And you could imagine some Warlock decks where, uh, you know, Zoo sometimes occasionally gets to turn 10 and they just keep dumping boards and reloading. And this would be a really sick top deck in that scenario. And it would be a fine mid-game card as well, I think. Two mana, uh, a couple three twos would be great to life tap into, for instance, like on turn five. Uh, you'd be pretty happy to get some efficient stats. Not necessarily something I'm really excited to play on turn two necessarily, though. So you might have to wait for this one, which means... Zoo doesn't like waiting. They don't like having cards in hand where it's like, yeah, I don't want to play this for a few turns. I want to do things now. They want to pressure. They want to be faster. So some questions there about Zoo archetype, I think, whether this really makes sense or not. Kind of does in some ways, but also doesn't necessarily support the primary directive of that deck, which is to go pretty hard with minions early and not always waiting until later in the game. So what other kind of Warlock deck could utilize this well, right? Is there some mid-range deck or Highlander deck that just wants bodies on board? I'm concerned that just playing a couple three twos dies to any random AOE or thing or just isn't swinging enough uh, to really make a difference uh, outside of that zoo deck that's just continually reloading boards and, and creating pressure. That tends to um, stress your opponent's removal and they don't have anything left by the time this connects on turn five or 10 or whatever. But any other deck probably isn't gonna be able to utilize this as well. So it does feel like it's, it's gonna fall in a spot where nobody really needs to run this or doesn't serve a purpose necessarily and other cards are just doing more at their given mana cost more reliably. Because two health minions, by the time you get to turn 10, um, I think they just go away too easily to too many things. So I think this card will be cool that it you know it gets randomly generated, that it exists. It's going to be fun to play and impactful in that regard. But as a card that gets ran in decks, I have major doubts. And here we have the Sunscale Raptor for Hunter, a one mana, one three beast, which right off the bat, that's something pretty awesome to work with for Hunter. And a Frenzy effect here. Shuffle a Sunscale Raptor into your deck with a permanent plus two, plus one. So uh, if you get this Frenzy off, you're going to get a three, four Sunscale Raptor added to your deck. And with the word permanent, I sort of think if that one also gets Frenzied, you're going to get a five, five Sunscale Raptor. You might just get another three, four Raptor, but theoretically this continues to scale if the frenzy continues to activate now i will say i think like many of our previous cards there might be some challenges here to get this frenzy effect off reliably particularly on the first couple versions again this doesn't have rush it's hard for you to control you might need some other sort of effect to support it often your opponents will just one shot it and frenzy won't go off which doesn't give you this upside of the kind of infinitely or just infinite resource of the Sunscale Raptors. Very few matchups would actually support that. You know, I still think it'd be super cool in something like duels, but in standard, probably not realistic. That said, I don't think this card necessarily needs that to be good. And in some cases even, shuffling a kind of garbage three, four Raptor, even at one mana into your deck, isn't really what you need if you're trying to draw something super specific. So it could almost be a downside on occasion and an upside you don't necessarily need because, you know, this is a Dire Mole. And in Hunter, you need one drops. This looks like a good one with any kind of beast synergy deck. And I think it'll get played just as a one mana, one three beast. And it'll be a really reasonable option uh, for Hunter in a variety of archetypes. Uh, whether that's like, you know, beast or just straight up face. Um, any kind of other shenanigan style deck, Highlander stuff is possible for this as well. Just giving you that early game play. Could be in just like every Hunter deck potentially. So good card, 
Um, don't get too distracted by the text necessarily. I don't think it's that important or even necessarily that good. Uh, but could occasionally make an impact on the game or be a cool deck build around where you just try to shuffle a bunch of these into your deck and go absolutely crazy. There's things like Dire Frenzy being teased is coming back too. So maybe there's some like Shuffle Hunter support where this even gets a bonus on its shuffle aspect. But for now, don't even get caught up on that. I think it's just a good card anyway. And then finally here, my last card is Desperate Prayer. A new zero mana holy card for Priest. It restores five health to each hero. So some very efficient healing here for Priest. Uh, that's going to be awesome sometimes when you're in a pinch against Demon Hunter, Rogue, whatever, and you need some life. You don't care about healing your opponent at all, of course. You're just happy to have a zero mana cheap way to gain life. Still squeeze in a hero power, whatever other card. Uh, also procs holy effects like we saw with our spirit healer, if that matters, which can do it very affordably. So it could be a way to stack up some buffs quickly. But it does have that zero mana card problem or really low cost card problem where you put a bunch of these in your deck and you don't have any card draw you're just out of gas immediately so it's hard sometimes to run these low impact low tempo cheap cards in your deck because they just don't give you enough oomph per card draw and i think that's what will happen to this card i don't think you're going to run it in your deck i think it's great when you hit it off of random effects and you find it in hand and it's a desperate prayer to stay alive that's going to be very impactful to exist in Hearthstone, but it's not going to be a card that many people run in decks. Outside of, again, that very specific scenario where there's some like crazy holy chain gadget Zan auctioneer, if he's even in standard format world where you can turn these zero mana spells into more card draw or into more value, because right now that's not something this card supports very well necessarily. And uh, that's going to make it really hard to put in a deck. Shadow Hunter Vol'jin is a three-star card. Blade Master Samuro is a four-star card. Chain Lightning is a four-star card. Brucon is a four-star card. Mancrick is a three-star card. Peon is a two-star card. Razor Main Raider is a two-star card. Druid of the Plains is a four-star card. Spirit Healer is a two-star card. Imp Swarm is a two-star card. Sunscale Raptor is a four-star card. Desperate Prayer is a two-star card. And there you go, folks. That's it for Forged in the Barrens review number one. A ton of cards already. I don't know how long it's going to be before we see more. Hopefully we see some before like a couple weeks. Sometimes they have those long gaps. I hope not. But for now, uh, some pretty interesting stuff. I think Frenzy is a really cool keyword. I love that we have um, spell types now, and apparently that's going to be retroactive as well, which is cool. Brucon seems like fun design. Mancrick's a great meme. Just all around some sweet stuff here. So share your thoughts on all these cards in the comments below. What was I right about? What was I totally stupid and ignorant about? And why was I so wrong? We just hear the worst card review ever. No, no bitterness there. <laughs> no, I love all the comments. Leave whatever you want. Uh, thanks much as always for watching, folks. Uh, stay tuned for more of these. We also have another core set review coming. They added some additional cards on top of the three I already reviewed. So check the channel for more card reviews. Um, one you might have missed, another one incoming. Lots and lots of stuff on the way. Uh, but uh, thanks for making me your card review destination, as always. Love you guys a ton. Thanks for watching, and until next time, game on.